So why are clouds so difficult to model? What about them, right? All the other processes we've been talking about, like ocean circulation and respiration of animals and photosynthesis, all this other stuff, it's complex too. So why are is the complexity of clouds so hard for us to model? And it's because clouds vary on multiple scales, where in order to model a cloud, we have to understand both what's happening on a sub micrometer cloud, right? Talking about like the nuclei of each individual tiny water droplet. We have to be able to model that all the way up to the entire cloud system where its cloud system might cover thousands of kilometers, right? And this range of scales all the way down from sub micrometer to thousands of kilometers is just too much information for us to numerically simulate even in the best computers that we have today. And it's not looking like um, we're going to be able to model this vast range of scales in the foreseeable future, even as our technology improves, right? It just requires so much processing power. So here's another way to look at this. Um, of the spatial scale on the x-axis, the time scale on the y-axis. And we know that cloud processes happen over a very, very wide spatial and time scale, all the way down from the tiny space and tiny time up to the larger. However, when we look at climate system models, we tend to only focus on those larger spatial scales and larger time scales. So our climate system models just don't overlap with cloud processes, so we're not able to model them at this time or model them well at this time. Now, we do know some of the basics, right? Even if we don't know all the details, we do know some of the basics. So we know that there is a climate response in the clouds. We know that there tends to be more higher clouds. Um, and remember, higher clouds tend to trap more heat. So as clouds rise, um, they're gonna trap more heat, causing the earth to get warmer. That's gonna be a positive feedback loop. We also see a broadening of the Hadley cell. The Hadley cell is what controls um, evaporation near the equator and precipitation at latitudes of 30 north and south. So that 30 north and south is broadening. The, the rain is actually moving both north and south away from the equator. There's also this poleward shift of storms. So more storms are making it to the Arctic Ocean and making it to Antarctica. Um, this is causing less sunlight to be reflected by clouds back into space and increasing surface warming. 